I, I, these people call me up and they'll say, Marco, we got mold, you know, and so they call me first to come to inspect the house. And of course, when I see the mold, I'm going to have you, have you come out to clean it or look at it. But and I ask them, well, what have you done differently? And then, we have done nothing. I said, well, what's that new fireplace? Oh, that's the ventless fireplace we have. We just put it in. And when did you have start having mold? Well, we just started having it now. <laughs> you know, right? And, and so it creates humidity, right? And if you have a cold wall, you know, and it's, let's say your house, you were talking earlier that you're, you had that foam insulation. Right. And, and it, it uh, shrunk. So you have a cold spot, right? Oh, yes. Well, what happens if you have a ventless fireplace and a cold spot? Duplex. And you get mold. And so the mold grows on, on the wall. Right. And it's directly proportional to the, to the ventless fireplace. We see that a lot in uh, slab homes, in the smaller slab homes. Uh, and they'll say, well, why is the, uh, why is the mold growing along my, uh, my ceiling, right at the wall? ceiling come together. That's where the insulation is. Right. And, and, and that would be something you'd look at, right? It, with, the, with the infrared camera, if the insulation isn't all the way up against, like in your ceiling. I, I think people call it wind washing, where air moves the insulation away and you have a small space where it's, it's no insulation. And if you have humidity, right. that's where you get the mold because of dew point condensation. Right. What do you think of, uh, since we're talking about that, these pellet stoves? Do you have any, these, these people are buying these pellet stoves now, and they're putting them into their living rooms to heat their home? <coughs> and <coughs> you, you don't see that? I've never seen a pellet furnace. I didn't know they made pellet stoves. Yeah, they have, uh, out, out in the rural areas, they, they put these pellet stoves in to heat the homes, and, and it would... What they fail to do, and I, I see this, once they put them in, all of a sudden they have, they have black stains from the soot, you know, the ghosting stains, you know, they have the mold usually on the north parts of the house because it's colder, because, you know, the sun comes from the east to the west, so the north is colder, five, six degrees, and you get the condensation, and, and you get the mold. And what's funny is with these pellet stoves is they put the pellet stove in, and then the thermostat's in the same room, so it doesn't matter if it's programmable because it's not going to turn on. And then that's where they get the cold rooms. They, they're bur burning the stove in, in the living room. The thermostat doesn't know what to do because it's heating that room. And the, and the north rooms and the bedrooms, it's cold. That's what happens. And that ghosting that you see is the thermal bridge and the moisture carries the carbon byproduct and it actually, well, I'll, I'll say condenses on the two by four mm -hmm. and it deposits the black stuff. And that's why, so that's why you see the black stains. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I guess that happens the way you're talking about it. It also, I think, I think it's called Brownian motion. And, <coughs> and Brownian motion is, is uh, where in, in a warm uh, room, temperature is warm, particles move, they move quickly mm -hmm. in the air. So if you have a fireplace is going to create possibly soot, or the pellet stove may create soot, right? So you got these particles floating around in the air quickly, and then it hits that thermal bridging, mm -hmm. and it slows down, and it attaches to that space, or plates out to that space. Yeah, basically, if the air was rising, it scrubs the wall, and if there's moisture, which is a byproduct of a uh, space heater, non or non vintage and the moisture gets dirtier, so to speak, because uh, you want, you have no soot if you have complete combustion. Of course, that's virtually impossible. So you have some of it that doesn't completely finish off in the secondary column of the flame. And that will stick to the wall. And over a time, maybe it'll be six months, maybe a year. I've had, I've seen it happen in an hour, but it was a very poor combustion. I mean, you may have had an inner cone and no outer cone at all. Of course, there's lots of carbon monoxide in there as well. And you've got sickness and headaches. And you know, you that's interesting you talk about that. Um, a lot of people, like, uh, today a lot of people have candles all over their homes. 
and and there, there's the all types of candles, and I see this more frequently with jar candles. Jar candles are the ones in the glass. Mm -hmm. So when the candle is new and you light it, there's plenty of oxygen. Mm -hmm. And as the candle starts to burn down, the byproduct is carbon dioxide and vapor, right? And carbon dioxide is heavier, so it falls to the floor. So in the candle jar, it falls to the bottom of the jar. As, it, as the candle burns down, there's more carbon dioxide. So then you have that incomplete combustion. Mm -hmm. So jar candles are major contributors to black, spa black spots and ghosting stains in homes. That is usually the reason when I've been asked to come out and do a failure analysis. Candles. Candles. Whether they're like this or whether they're like this. <laughs> how, how many times have you gone out to a house where people, they claim that they're sick, you know, they're, oh, I'm so sick in my house, and, and, and of course they have like three dogs and the, and the humidity is high and they have old carpets, right? But they're sick because there's mold and you come to the house and you look at that and you're like, that's not mold. How do you handle that? What do you tell these people when, you, when it looks like, because it's black, right? Isn't it black? It's, it's not always, mold. No, it's always black. And it's you soot. Put a piece of tape up there and it comes off and it's not mold. What do you do as a, when you come out to a mold call and they think they're sick of mold and you determine that it's not mold at all. It's you tell them it's their candles or oh, I, I yeah. Again, that's another childhood fantasy that was very romantic and warm and warm fuzzies to have candles burning. Candles are so. Would you agree? Candles are probably not. A good oh, thing. and then most of them now are made in China, where they use lead in the wicks. <laughs> yes. <And> so <laughs> now, yes. <Yeah>. Now you're <laughs> so. So we're getting lead poison too, right? Yeah. Oh, it's thrilling. Uh, so yeah, That's interesting. huge contaminant. And they, they actually import candles with lead in them. Yes, it's been found to determine that the import candles. Least we have. I don't wow. Think we do anymore? We well, have. there's still Chinese candles being imported, and so if you want to burn a candle, if you should make sure. Suggest that, right? No, no. There are these wonderful little electronic candles that you light, and they look pretty much like a candle, and they're not they putting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not putting anything. Oh, I've seen those. They have those. Mm -hmm. Particle. They, 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 they're just they're just electricity, and they right. move around. Particle contamination in the air is huge. It's a huge contributor to indoor air quality and respiratory issues. It's. It's almost as important as the mold itself, as far as being a causation for, for problems. That, that's very interesting. So you, you go to a home, and there's a complaint about everybody's sick, and it's all, of course it's the mold. It could be 50 other things, right? Particles. And you look at the candles, you look at the dog hair, you look at the cat hair. The, the plug-in air, the plug-in, oh, oh, the, the plug-ins. Plug the plug-in. <laughs> The plug-in air purifier. You know, I heard that some of those plug-ins, they, they have this this uh, uh, phthalates in them. And I heard phthalates are carcinogen. Is, is that true? They can, can cause cancer, some of these plug-ins. Is that correct? I think you're pretty correct. So when they say it smells fresh, <laughs> it's not that fresh, is it? <laughs> and then you look at their ducts. And, you see, and, it, and then you see that you could grow strawberries in that ductwork. And so all that air is passing over. It's drawing all of those contaminants in the air back to the furnace. Oh, and then they're using the 98 cent filters, which all they do is block six and stones. They have no micron resistance at all. And it all blows through the duct. And it blows through all that dust and junk in the duct and then back out in the air. And because they don't have any makeup here, they're breathing the same stuff 24-7. And it's like, gee, why are you doing that? How you many know, times do you, do you use the same bath water for a month? Well, I, of course I don't. Good same thing.